This experiment evolved fairly large amounts of toxic gases. It also contained both corrosive, toxic and bleaching chemicals. Therefore, refer to the safety data sheets of all the chemicals to know the hazards. This can be performed by an adult under a fume hood or outside with the wind in your bag, but this is on your own responsibility. Hello and welcome to my video on how to make corpus chloride. In a beaker labeled A, pour 100 milliliters of water Thirty grams of copper sulfate pentahydrate, and also pour in nine grams of sodium chloride. This can be fair, uh, quite difficult to solve, but you can add some excess water, uh, as I am doing in the video. The amount of water the doesn't affect the final product. As you can see I'm trying to dissolve it but it's quite difficult. So we'll get some water. Um, this should be enough. Okay, I'm about satisfied with the with the dissolved chemicals now. So let's pass on to a beaker labeled B. To this, add 70 milliliters of water, 4.5 grams of sodium hydroxide, and as you can see, I had some problem with the chemical sticking on the paper. So this took uh Oh, we are about there. Um, that's it. I gave up on getting the rest into the beaker. Now, after all the sodium hydroxide has dissolved, involving a lot of heat, then add which I'm getting here. Then add seven grams of sodium hydrogen sulfate which is also known as sodium bisulfide these chemicals shouldn't be that difficult to dissolve in the water as you can see it is dissolving very quickly almost instantly Now that's it, far more, far more quickly than the copper sulfate and sodium chloride. Now take beaker A back to the table again and then pour in beaker B. This should be on, on the fume hood or outside. A brown precipitate will form. This is copper hydroxide. But when you stir it around and the, all the chemicals are reacting, it will get into copper chloride, with with which will be white, as you can see here. Make sure all the chemicals have reacted. Stir it up quite well. And then pour it back into beaker B to get all of the chemicals to react. As you can see at the brown color, there was some chemical left in the beaker, so this was a good was a good idea. Now pour it back into beaker A. This will also mix the mix the chemical completely.
Now stir it up well. As you can see the copper chloride is insoluble, that is in water. And you can already see it falling down to the bottom. It happened really quickly. This isn't time lapsed. The chemical is very dense. Okay, then wait five minutes for the chemicals to react. At that time, all the chemicals has fell down to the bottom. Okay, now put put uh, now unscrew the lid of the beaker and fill the beaker with water. This should be cold water to prevent the chemicals from reacting with the oxygen in the water too quickly. Now wait another five minutes. To and after the five minutes, the copper chloride will have collected at the bottom as you can see here uh, there's almost none parti particles left in the water and all of the particles has, has ended at the bottom of the beaker now that's good you can see with the flashlight that there isn't that many particles left but I am impatient so I'm gonna move on now now I want to decan off the water. Now when you have decanted off the water, you're gonna add another amount of motor. The water. You're gonna fill up the beaker again. Now you can see it have has a slightly blue color. It's due to the impurities of the chemicals. Now when the this has fell to the bottom, you can see that the water is getting brown. This is some copper chloride and copper sulfate re reacting with the with the water and this excess sodium hydroxide to form copper hydroxide. Now we're going to repeat the steps until you reach this color. Now lots of the the of the impurities have been filtered away and the copper chloride has the bottom and the some of the copper chloride is uh, is turned into copper hydroxide. Now take it off the water again as I have done here and you take a, a funnel and put it into a beaker and fold a coffee filter so that there is no rails open at the bottom and the side. Now put the coffee filter into the funnel. When you have done that pour the the copper hydroxide and copper chloride mix into the funnel with the coffee paper. Coffee paper. Now we'll take some excess water to wash out the rest of the chemicals. When this is filtered through, you can wash it several times with water to improve the quality of the chemical. You can actually also wash it with ethanol as copper chloride is also insoluble in ethanol but I'm gonna leave this step out okay now all the liquid have filtered through and you're gonna scrape out the chemical and discard the liquid I've collected the chemical in the beaker and as you can see it is both copper chloride and copper hydroxide. When you mix it with diluted hydrogen chloride, or yeah, then you it's almost pure copper chloride. I meant hydrochloric acid.